Good evening, and welcome to the April 9th, 2024 regular session meeting of City Council. If you are here tonight and would like to address Council, 
please talk to staff in the lobby. Please indicate <laughs> items I for matters that are germane to city council. If the item you wish to speak to is not on the agenda. Light system is three minutes. After stating your name and address, the green light will appear. After two minutes, you will see a yellow light. After three minutes, you will see a red light. At that time, we ask you to take your seat. Written remarks may be handed to the city clerk to be made a part of the record. The city code identifies the procedure for participation regarding items on tonight's agenda and provides the opportunity for citizens to address city council on matters that are germane to council. Matters that are germane to council means that matters that the city council by law is empowered to act upon. This does not include announcements that are personal to you, your business, or your organization. At this time, please silence your phones. Prior to beginning the business portion of the meeting, Rabbi David will, with Rodef Shalom Temple, will provide invocation to the council. Afterward, Councilman Ely will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. It is the practice of council to stand for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Those who also wish to stand are welcome, but under no obligation to do so. Thank you. Supreme author of life, we thank you for the precious gift of life and the blessings of community. We are thankful for life itself, for the health we enjoy, which allows us to fulfill our callings. We are grateful for the abundance in the world, which sustains us daily, deeply appreciate the friendships which support us and the camaraderie of community, which elevates us all. Fill our hearts with love for and respect for our fellow citizens. Help us to see their virtues and the sanctity which you have planted in all of us who are created in your divine image. Reveal yourself as a mirror wherein we can see ourselves reflected both as we are and as you see us filled with possibility. Politics can be a holy vocation when you choose to make it so. You on this council are the custodians of our city and serve a unique role to provide for the needs of the whole community while simultaneously being stewards of the most vulnerable amongst us. We pray that those here be blessed for having undertaken the mantle of leadership, bless them with wisdom and insight, help them to realize that all the power, wealth, and control that we possess are gifts from you. May you all serve justly and righteously, wisely and compassionately, distributing our God-given gifts with a burning compassion for the oppressed and an abiding concern for all <laughs> citizens. May the Holy One grant you strength to confront difficult decisions with courage, to engage in challenging discussions with open-mindedness and patience, to hear beyond the cacophony of voices <coughs> that call for your attention. May you always have enough happiness to keep you sweet, enough trials to keep you strong, enough hope to keep you happy, enough failure to keep you humble, enough success to keep you eager, enough friendship to give you comfort, enough love from family to keep you at peace, enough wealth to meet your needs, enough enthusiasm to look forward, <coughs> enough faith to thirst for justice and rightness, and enough determination to make each tomorrow better than yesterday. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public hearings. Page four. Item E1 is the city manager's fiscal year 2025 recommended operating budget. This is the public hearing that city council is conducting on the recommended operating budget. Tonight's public hearing will be continued to Thursday, April 11th, 2024 at 7 p.m. in room 113 of the Denby Community Center at 15198 Warwick Boulevard. By state code, each locality is required to hold one public hearing on the budget.
help ensure that city council who ultimately decides the budget will hear from citizens on their issues. As the public hearing this Thursday will be a continuation of the city's one public hearing, citizens are allowed to speak only once on any single topic over the two-day public hearing. On March 26, 2024, the city manager presented his fiscal year 2025 recommended operating budget to city council. Two work sessions have already been held by city council to hear presentations on this budget. On April 23rd, 2024, there'll be a third work session in which city council will continue to discuss the budget and communicate city council's desire as a body to the city manager. On Tuesday, May 14th, city council plans to adopt the Newport News Public Schools operating budget and adopt the city's total operating budget as scheduled. By state code, the last legal adoption date for the school's budget is May 15th and June 15th for the city manager's <coughs> operating budget. The budget hearing tonight and the one on Thursday can be viewed live on Cox 48 and Verizon Channel 19, as well as the city's website. You can view the full recommended operating budget online on the city's webpage and in all of our local public library branches. City Manager Alan Archer will provide an overview of the budget that was presented to City Council. Mr. Manager. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. At this time, I would like to invite Lisa Cipriano, our Director of Budget and Evaluation, to present a brief overview of the proposed FY 2025 operating budget to Council and the public. Additionally, I'd like to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude to Lisa and her dedicated team for their exceptional efforts in crafting this budget, as well as acknowledging the contributions of our entire leadership team. I would also like to make a brief reference to the city manager recommended budget at a glance document. If uh, there are still uh, documents available, you uh, are welcome to uh, pick up a copy and take it with you for a brief overview of the entire proposed uh, recommended operating budget. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Good evening, City Council, and good evening, citizens of the City of Newport News. It is my extraordinary pleasure to present to you the City Manager's 25 recommended operating budget, and I will be providing a very brief overview of the contents of this very large and complex um, uh, operating budget. The budget process is an actual all year long process. We never stop uh, creating the budget putting it together and planning for the next one. So looking at the conditions of the economic situation that the city and the nation finds itself in, there were several issues that um, formed this uh, budget. First was the residual <coughs> supply chain impact, the impact of inflation on the city as it purchases goods and services, what the economic uncertainty is for a recession, maybe later this fiscal year or into the next. And then, most importantly, to build an operating budget built on the current tax rate. Um, some of the base, most critical expenses that we include in every single operating budget is our contribution to the schools, our investment in employee compensation. We have as cornerstones in our operating budget our annual debt payments and to make sure our pension contributions are funded at 100 per percent and secure payments on those. We are investing in our strategic priorities. We recognize the impact infl on inflation of, on the city itself when it purchases goods and services. And when we have um, the opportunity to invest in new strategies, we make sure that those strategies are sustainable for the long term. This, bill, uh, this budget was built on the uh, most recently adopted City Council's uh, revised strategic priorities, and you will find that all the way through the budget document. So focusing just on the general fund alone, and that is the major source of services that the citizens seize, that is our police, fire, our um, contribution to our schools, our libraries, our parks, and the majority of services that the citizen actually experiences themselves. And that budget is proposed at $624 million for the upcoming year. As the City of Newport News is a provider of services, not a consumer <coughs> or we do not produce widgets, tires, whatever, the largest 
portion of that $624 million goes to salary and fringe benefits. And almost 50% of the general fund goes to support the employees of the, city, uh, of the city of Newport News. The largest next contribution is our support for schools at $123 million. By state code, the city comes to a calculation of a required local effort for the upcoming year. It's approximately $57, $58 million to show that we are spending $123 million or basically double our required local effort shows our contribution and our commitment to our local schools. Our debt service is very much like a homeowner's mortgage. It is something that we have to pay first. It is a contractual obligation <clears throat> that we must pay over a 20-year period every time we issue bonds. And that's about $45 million, or 7% of our operating budget. So if the city is not funding salary and fringe benefits, not making a direct contribution to schools, not paying off its debt, everything else that the city does, purchases, uses, and provides fits within $162 million of the operating budget. So here's a brief snapshot of how every tax dollar is um, used within the city and the general fund. 20 cents goes to uh, schools, 19 cents goes to public safety, and then you can see all the way through um, how that is portioned out for the other functions within the general fund. So the major expenses that are found in the FY25 operating budget are an increase to school funding of $3.5 million, a general wage increase effective in July of 2024 for all eligible employees will be $5.2 million. Um, we are currently under a uh, market review that considers um, public safety increase. That has a set aside a loan of $2.6 million in additional funding. Our full funding of our pension, both for NERF and VRS, is almost $3 million at 2.8. These are all increases. With these increases in mind, only six new positions will be added in the new fiscal year at slightly around a half million dollars. Employees must have vehicles to drive and to do replacement, that's an additional $300,000. We are also fully funding at just short of a million dollars, nine single role paramedic positions that the city manager has added in this fiscal year as a pilot program to see how that would help uh, staffing in the fire department in the future. Um, as a uh, uh, youth and gang violence um, additive, we are looking at conducting a midnight basketball program starting in the early months in the next couple of weeks, um, ending this fiscal year and beginning over the summer months, and that will be over $200,000 for us. And then, most importantly, something that City Council has been greatly invested in for many years is the reinstatement of the Summer Youth Employment Program. Uh, this will be just short of a million dollars. These are all additional adds to the operating budget. And just a brief outlook um, for schools. This information may have changed as of last night with the governor's budget. The school's budget was um, proposed based on the governor's recommendation of December 2023. And with that, the state would only be providing $1.7 million in new additional dollars to our school system. And that's why the city manager agreed and uh, recommends an additional three and a half million dollars um, to schools. <clears throat> For the user fee funds of water work, solid waste, stormwater, and wastewater, there are no uh, rate or fee increases proposed in this operating budget. So the next steps are um, City Council holds the public hearing tonight, which is continued over to next Thursday, this coming Thursday, at Denby Community Center. As the mayor indicated, the full budget is found on the city's website and in all the public libraries and, of course, in the budget office. Um, 
We also have had topics specific that City Council has asked for additional information on. And of course, the budget is the budget department's favorite topic to talk about. So please feel free to call us. We will go through, we will meet with anybody who's interested in having any additional information or detailed information provided to them. So with that, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Um, before we get to the speakers, I know we have to read, I think, three or four disclosures. I'll start with Councilman Neely. I, John R. Ely III, have a personal interest in the consideration and adoption of FY 2025 operating budget as I have received a solid from What's Next for Success Foundation with a business affected by transaction. However, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2311B1, I am not disqualified for participating in the consideration and adoption of the budget. My disclosure statement required under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3115H is on file with the City Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Long. I, Kalina Malong, have a personal interest in the consideration <coughs> and adoption of the fiscal year 2025 operating budget. As I am an employee of Newport News Shipbuilding, a division of Huntington Ingalls, which is a business affected by the transaction. However, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2, TAC 3112, Bravo 1, I am not disqualified from participating in the consideration and adoption of the budget. My disclosure statement required under Virginia Code Section 2.2, TAC 3115, Hotel, is on file with the City Clerk. Thank you. Vice Mayor. I, Curtis D. Bethany III, have a personal interest in the consideration and adoption of the FY 2025 operating budget as I am an employee of Ferguson Enterprises, which is a business affected by the transaction. However, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3112B1, I am not disqualified from participating in the consideration and adoption of the budget. <clears throat> My disclosure statement required under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3115H is on file with the City Clerk. And I'll wrap it up. I, Philip Jones, have a personal interest in the consideration and adoption of the fiscal year 2025 operating budget as my wife is an employee of Riverside Healthcare, which is a business affected by this transaction. However, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3112, Bravo 1, I am not disqualified from participating in the consideration and adoption of the budget. My disclosure is on file with the city clerk under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3115H. We good, city attorney? You're good. Sir. Great. Mm -hmm. So are there any speakers? <clears throat> um, for staff in the back, my computer's messing up, but I'm going to go with what I currently have. Adrian Manning. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adrian Manning. I'm president of the International Association of Firefighters, Local 794 for Newport News Fire Department. My home address is 20221 Shady Pond Lane, Zunai, Virginia, 23898. Ladies and gentlemen of uh, council and citizens of Newport News, I come before you today to thank you for your continued support of the Newport News Fire Department. The men and women of this department <coughs> share a common need for more manpower investment in our infrastructure and a defined compensation pay plan, all of which will increase the safety of our community and its employees. We believe the implementation of the public safety step pay plan is crucial for ensuring the recruitment and retention of our dedicated public safety personnel. Our firefighter medics are now 23% busier than they were just five years ago, and our city has more fires per capita than the city of Virginia Beach. Our compensation has not kept up with the cost of living or the real estate prices, and our employees cannot even afford to live in the city in which they work. The new comprehensive step pay plan will incentivize experienced officers and firefighters to remain in our city, bolstering the expertise within our public safety departments and ultimately enhancing the safety of the city of Newport News. Furthermore, we hope that the proposed budget will address critical shortage of staffing within the Newport News Fire Department. As the population of our city continues to grow, so does its demand for emergency services. Our staffing levels are now the lowest they have been in years, and our employees must work an average of 13 people, our department works an average of 13 people over every day just to cover the apparatus needs to respond to these emergencies. These personnel must consistently work 72 to 96 hour shifts, which is 
three to four days of overtime, which not only burdens themselves, but their family lives as well. Increasing the number of firefighters is a matter of public safety and department safety. Our personnel are expected to make instant decisions, often in the most inhospitable conditions on earth, yet they are physically and mentally exhausted. They are at their breaking point, suffering from compassion fatigue, PTSD, anxiety, and sleep deprivation. Our men and women need help, and we believe that your support of the step pay plan and bolstering our personnel numbers will alleviate these problems. I sincerely thank City Council and the manager for your support and care on our issues. We know our pay plan proposal and increase in personnel allotments are expensive, but we truly believe they are needed. We believe that Local 794 <coughs> will be able to work seamlessly with you on this and any other issues that may arise because working together in good faith is our purpose. Thank you for your attention and consideration to our concerns. Thank, Thank you. you. Jason Thornton. Good evening, my name is Jason Thornton. Uh, my address is 3013 Southwold Court, Williamsburg, Virginia, 23185. Mayor Jones, City Manager Archer, and members of City Council, thank you for the opportunity to briefly discuss Literacy for Life as a recommended recipient of the 2025 Community Support Agency Grant. Uh, I am the Executive Director of Literacy for Life. Literacy for Life is a community-based literacy organization whose mission is to empower adults with foundational skills for success in life and work. We provide one-to-one -one tutoring and classroom instruction in reading, writing, math, and English, English language. In addition to those core services, we address other critical community needs, including health, financial, and digital literacy. We also provide career coaching and tutor support for adults pursuing workforce certification and living wage employment. Last year, we served 703 adult learners this year, for the first time, we're on pace to serve 1,000. For the majority of our nearly 50-year history, we've provided services in Greater Williamsburg, while a previous recipient of the Community Support Agency grant, Peninsula Reads, provided similar but more limited services in Newport News and Hampton. In August of 2023, Peninsula Reads abruptly and unexpectedly closed its doors, but within a matter of weeks, Literacy for Life began expanding its services to fill the gap. We felt that quick expansion was critical since more than 11,000 adults living in this community have yet to obtain a high school diploma. And since nearly 15,000 adults were born outside of the United States, many of them need, uh, needing English language development in order to become engaged members of our community. We know that there's a tremendous need for our services in Newport News, and we are eager to meet that need. However, because we're a nonprofit community-based literacy organization, we can't provide those services without community support. Uh, the support recommended in this, this year's budget is critical to continuing our work in Newport News and building a viable operation here. Our 50-year track record shows that it can be done, but it does indeed require a community effort. Since a parent's literacy level, and particularly a mother's literacy level, is the number one determinant of a child's academic success, your investment is not only an investment in adults of this community, but in families as well. And so again, thank you for including us in your recommend, recommended budget for 2025. <laughs> With your help, uh, we're hopeful that we can sustain our services in Newport News for many years to come, and we look forward to working together with you and the rest of the Newport News community to make that possible. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Matt, Teresa. Good evening. My name is Matthew Jarasa. I'm a 19-year Newport News resident at 340 56th Street, City of Newport News. And I'm a 16-year officer with the Newport News Police Department. Um, I serve as the president of the Newport News chapter of Virginia Police Benevolent Association. The Newport News PBA chapter has law enforcement members from the police department, sheriff's office, park rangers, and fire marshal's office for the City of Newport News. I come before you this evening to speak in favor of adopting the pay scale increase for police officers that was recently proposed by Chief Drew. Law enforcement as a whole in 2024 has found itself in a struggle to recruit, train, and retain qualified police officers. NNPD has a strong recruitment recruiting unit 
and a training program I'm sure most of you have seen in your interactions with the community, uh, the work that Newport News police officers do every day and night. Can I please have the police officers and firefighters in attendance please raise their hands? Thank you. The Newport News Police Department runs our own training academy that is funded by the city budget and staffed by assigned officers to the academy. In order to provide the required instruction, other officers who are DCJS certified instructors are brought in from their regular duties to teach all facets of topics and skills to include firearms, driving, defensive tactics, first aid CPR, constitutional law, radar operation, just to name a few. The New Purdue's Police Department makes a significant investment in money and man hours to train new officers to the standard demanded by Chief Drew, the City Council, and the citizens of Newport News. The fact of the matter is the department is currently having issues retra retaining its officers. Several other departments have begun to use the dollar to recruit and hire trained officers from other departments, and based on the quality of officer our academy trains, we are a prime target for this. In their defense, these officers leaving have no reason to stay. Uh, they see a significant pay increase. Many are not even invested in the VRS at that point, and the ones who are can move with their future retirement intact. There are a few of us left in this room who are with NERF and will be here until retirement. I am here this evening not because I want a pay rise, pay raise, I'm not complaining, However, but because I want to see the Newport News Police Department be successful in the goals set out by Mayor Jones and meet the expectations of the City Council. The goals and expectations can only be realized by a modern, properly staffed police department. Ultimately, I would like to see the, this investment in the police department and my friends in the fire department to retain officers and meet the staffing requirements in order to best keep Newport News a safe community for its residents to live, work, and play. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Angela Moore. Good evening. My name is Angela Moore. I'm a very concerned, scared Newport News citizen who resides at 1117 80th Street. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak about some people who are very near and dear to my heart. They are my heroes, the ones who are right now sitting behind me, the ones who are right now serving on the streets of the city, keeping us safe while we meet. The ones who are right now at home spending quality time with, your fam with their families. They're the folks who make up the Newport News Police and Fire Departments. These folks make a daily sacrifice to lay down their lives for the citizens of Newport News, not knowing if they will make it home safely to their families and friends at the end of their shifts. Their simple request to you, the leaders of our city, is to match their salaries with those of the surrounding jurisdictions. <coughs> Right now, they're the lowest paid department in the Hampton Roads area. Because of this, a great majority of these folks have to work secondary duty or second jobs. This is shameful. Mayor Jones, in your 2024 State of the City address, you stated that Newport News is the largest city on the peninsula and the fifth largest city in the state. And yet, we can't pay our police and fire personnel better than we do. I have friends in both departments that have spoken with them, and they tell me that morale is at an all-time low. This is from someone who has been with his chosen department for more than 30 years. Again, disgraceful. They tell me that they cannot remember a day at work where they aren't discussing who the latest person is who is leaving. There are several right now who are in the process of joining Hampton Police Department, Pocosin Fire Department, people with many years of experience. As a lifelong citizen of Newport News, I'm terrified knowing that the average patrol officer right now probably has less than three years experience. This is not good. These folks, we're told last year that you, the leaders of our city, were going to try to do something for the two departments in July 2024. Now they're being told, no, not in July. It's going to be January 2025. As you continue to push back what, we were, what you were going to do for them, we currently are losing valuable and experienced police and fire personnel. There has been very little done to recruit and who would want to come to an area that is getting ready to lose one-fourth of their departments if the salaries are not increased to match the surrounding cities. These Potential recruits see they can go elsewhere and make more money. And but what about retaining? What other city wouldn't want to snatch up a trained police officer from Newport News, nonetheless, who has some of the best training instructors in the country, have them join their force? CNU President William Kelly stated, CNU works together with Newport News in service, brain power, and employment. The students come here, they study here, settle here, and raise their families here. But why would they want to do that with a mass exodus of our fire and police? My plea to you tonight is to please consider this step pay plan, increase their salaries just to match the surrounding jurisdictions. Pour that money instead of redeveloping downtown or state-of-the-art facilities for our schools, 
pour it into our fire and police departments. Keep our city safe. You're going to see people starting to move out of the area because they don't feel comfortable here. So please consider doing the right thing. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Melvin Davidson. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Um, Mel My name is Melvin Davidson. I live at 606 Hamlin Street. And I'm here to ask for tax relief from the high real estate property taxes that the citizens of Newport News are forced to pay. These real estate taxes are a real burden for every homeowner, particularly for retired people on a fixed income. Most elderly citizens have lived in their homes for many years, and during this time their homes have greatly appreciated in value, which results in high assessments and high taxes. Now, there are uh, programs for real estate tax deferral and real estate tax exemption for people over 65 years of age. But I believe they are unfair in that the qualifying income and combined asset levels are set too low. I believe the program should be prorated to where a senior citizen could qualify for at least partial tax relief. Ma'am, we just have the just the person at the podium to speak, ma'am. Thank you. As it is but, now, but I hear you. I hear you. As it is now, either you qualify or you don't. Either you're in or you're out on this program. It just isn't fair for a senior citizen who has lived in their home for maybe 20, 30, or 50 years to have to continue to pay these high real estate taxes just because they have a little bit too much income to qualify for the program. I'm asking you to have the Commissioner of the Revenue review these programs to make changes to where more seniors could qualify and get relief from high taxes. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Kay Slaughter. Good evening. My Good name evening. is Kay Slaughter. I'm a 35-year resident of Newport News. Um, I reside at 810 Garrow Road. Um, I'm actually calling this my victim impact statement. I don't know if you were aware of that, but it's a statement that people give when something's happened to them, to the people that affected, that implied it. Um, because I'm now a victim of what's going to be happening to our city when we lose these people that are sitting here today protecting us. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you. Um, I hope you thank them for what they do. Um, take a good look at them. Some of them may not be here. And that, that really scares me. Um, Newport News last year, we had police department over 230,000 calls. Firefighters, roughly, approximately 43,000. Medics, 31,000. In an article done on um, WTKR in 2023, Chief Drew was quoted saying, it's a lot and I have to be careful not to burn, not for my officers not to get burnt out. Well, they're about to get burnt out. They're stretching themselves to the limit. Um, you know, we're now tied for the lowest paid for them. And, you know, we should be proud of them. I'm proud of them. I appreciate what they do for me. You know, I did a ride along in my city, third shift in my area, because I wanted to know what was going on in my, where I live. It's very eye opening to see what they do, to know that, you know, they're there at something at night and within 30 seconds there's, there's backup for them. It made me feel safe being with them that night. I can't imagine how it makes them feel. Um, it's just, you should all do it. If you haven't done it, I highly recommend you doing it. It's very eye-opening. Um, you know, these fine men and women deserve to be recognized for what they do and they should also be compensated for it as well. Um, we're going to lose a significant amount of highly trained professionals. So I hope that you guys take that into consideration. The bottom line is when you don't feel appreciated by the city you live in, you will leave to find better opportunities. We, we need them here. You know, it's, it's a big city. We need that. 
um, we will suffer the consequences of your actions if this is not reconsidered. And once again, police, fire, and medics, I want to say thank you all tonight for what you do. I do appreciate you, and I hope the other citizens do as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you for my time. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Trumbor. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, City Council. My name's Larry Trumbor. I live at 24 7 or 247 William Faulkner South in Newport News. And I am here on behalf of the Lackey Clinic. I'm the CEO. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the generous support you have of Lackey this year. Um, we are 100% funded through grants and uh, by donations. And so our $2.7 million, your contribution means a lot to us there. In fact, we're the only free and charitable clinic left on the Hampton Roads Peninsula. Help Clinic can no longer do medical, and the Golden Bethune Clinic um, is no longer a free and charitable clinic. So who do we serve? Um, we serve the people that don't have health insurance or dental insurance. These are most likely working people, so they don't qualify for Medicaid. And if they buy a high deductible plan, a lot of times they don't use it. And so these are the people that come into our clinic every day. And the stories, I can, I'll give you some facts, but the stories about the people we serve is just heartbreaking and also very re rewarding. Um, <clears throat> Mayor Jones, we went to your uh, City of the Council speech, and we love being the team analogy, and so we want to be on that team, and, and we want to be on the team. We, we were helping the Four Oaks uh, Day Shelter last year, and we'll continue to do that. 62% of our patients are Newport News residents. We had about uh, 1,400 Newport News resident patients this year. We're going to take that over 18 to 2,000 next year, um, and so just wanted to tell you that. Uh, the lady mentioned inflation, and inflation has really hit the medical. Uh, you know, our inflation for staff has been over 10% the last couple of years, and that's just to keep people that are underpaid on the staff. But we love what we do. We're serving God, and we're serving people, so we really can't get a better uh, career. The, um, the value that we bring to Newport News, when you add up the medical and dental, almost 1.2 million, the pharmacy of 4.5 of free drugs, charity care, almost 3 million from the local hospitals that do the things we can't do, and then the virtual visits, um, it comes up to almost 8.6, 8.7 million, and we're going to do over 10 million next year. I can just feel that's what God has for us. The amount you've given us this year, 15% uh, of our cost to do the business, 2% of the value, and so hopefully you see that Lackey Clinic is a, a real um, multiplier for you all. We're going to have a great year next year. Uh, we're doing asynchronous visit. For those of you that came, I know the mayor was there, Cleon, you were there, Alan was there, but asynchronous visits means anybody can go on and, and do a free visit with us right now. And we've had over 185 visits in the last two months since we rolled it out. We've been serving Newport News for 25 years, and we look for another strong 25 years. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. Yeah. William Jackson is the final speaker on the budget. <clears throat> I'm Barbara Jackson. I live at 745 Chatworth, um, Newport News. I didn't write anything. I'm talking with my heart. We got a notice that another change in the real estate assessment. What are y'all doing to us seniors? We're on a fixed income. Our house is already paid for. And y'all keep raising the assessment. It's not fair. What about the state lottery? Why can't you put some money, take some money from there and be easy with the seniors? Y'all trying to drive us out of Newport News? Where are we going to live? We, wanna be, we want you guys to be fair with us with this state. Real estate tax is not fair. Each year it's going up. So what we got to do, we got to take money from our saving to pay for it. You think that's fair to the seniors? We have a lot of seniors in Newport News. You guys got to realize that the senior rate in Newport News is high. So when I get 90, I'm going to pay $10,000. Where am I going to get $10,000 from? Be fair to the seniors. We're, gonna, we're here and we're here to stay. We want you guys to recognize that. The seniors are just as important as everybody else. And thank you. And I voted for you, Mr. Jones. Thank you. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna run it back in two years, all right? Um, so that's, that's, all the, that's all the cards that I have for the budget. I was going to, to save 
my comments toward the end, but I'm going to take mayor privilege and just say a few things. Um, someone asked me, what's the, you know, how can, how can I pray for you? What's the hardest part about, about being mayor? And I said, well, I need, we need the wisdom of Solomon because it's a fiduciary responsibility, right? We have to balance multiple things in the city. We have to balance um, how we care for the least of these, the underserved. We have to balance how we ensure that our public servants, our firefighters, our police officers are fairly compensated. Um, we have to take a look at how we can move the city forward and that we're not dependent on one and two employers. And so what I would tell you is that uh, everyone on city council, to include the city manager and his staff, we understand what 1% raising, what it, it adds and what it takes away from the city. We understand macroeconomic trends that are going to happen 5, 10, 15 years from now. Um, we are ensuring that every single dollar is spent and invested in the right way. Um, you know, it's, it's a billion dollar budget. We want to ensure that everything is allocated toward our strategic vision. And so the last thing I'll say is, as a reminder, this is the recommended budget from the city manager. It is now, according to the charter, has now come to city council. We will hear concerns, but there has been no action on it. So everything is still on the table. Uh, we take uh, the hard work from Lisa, from budget, from the city manager, and then the seven of us will sit down and we decide where things go. So we hear you, we thank you for coming out, but we want to ensure that as members of city council, there is a fiduciary responsibility to ensure that we protect everyone in the city, to include our underserved, while also ensuring that we pay down our debt and make sure that the city can survive after I'm done being mayor, people are done here on council. So fair enough, okay? So thank you. Page 43, item E2 is a request to adopt an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager execute a deed of easement and agreement by and between the city of Newport News and Deer Run Holdings, granting a landscape easement over city-owned property located at 791 Industrial Park Drive. Sorry, city manager, city manager recommends approval. Are there any speakers? No, sir. Motion to close the public hearing. So so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ealy? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilman Vick? Four. Councilman Woodbury? Four. <clears throat> Motion carries, seven zero. Motion to adopt the ordinance. Move adoption. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ealy? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury? Four. Motion carried, 7 0. Page 53, item E3 is a request to adopt an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a deed of easement by and between the city of Newport News and Dominion Energy for an easement across city owned property located on Dyson Shores Lane in New Kent County. The manager recommends approval. Are there any speakers? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Hale Thompson, Sr., for questions only. City Council, do we have any questions at this time? Hearing none, you're good, sir. Thank you. Motion to close public hearing. So moved. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. <clears throat> Councilman Ely? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury? Four. Motion carries 7 0. Motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ely? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury? Four. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Item E4 is a request to adopt an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a deed of easement by and between the city of Newport News and Dominion Energy, granting a utility easement across city owned property located at 1500 Jefferson Avenue in support of the Southeast Community Early Childhood Education Center. City Manager recommends approval. Are there any speakers? No, sir. Motion to close public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ely? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury? Four. Motion carries, seven zero. Thank you. Motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. Adopt. Second. Okay. Yep. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ely? Four. 
Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury? Four. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Page 74, item E5 is a request to adopt an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a deed of easement by and between the city of Newport News and Dominion Energy Virginia, granting a utility easement across city-owned property located at 750 14th Street, 1202 Ivy Avenue, 1200 Ivy Avenue, and 963 Ivy Avenue in support of the Ivy Avenue Road Program. City Manager recommends approval. Are there any speakers? No, sir. Is there a motion to close public hearing? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ely? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilman Woodbury? Four. Motion carries <coughs> seven zero. Thank you. Motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ely? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury? Four. Motion carried, seven zero. Thank you. Consent agenda. Item F contains the following item, page 84, minutes of the work session of March 26, 2024, page 157, minutes of the regular meeting of March 26, 2024, page 173, request to approve resolution canceling the regular council meeting of June 25th, 2024, and rescheduling to July 2nd, 2024. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda, item F1 through F3, all inclusive? So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ely? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury. Four. Motion carried seven zero. Thank you. Next on our agenda, other city council actions, page one seventy six, item G one, Mr. Manager. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. Item G one is a request to adopt an ordinance establishing a charter review committee to review and make recommendations for revisions to the charter of the City of Newport News. The current charter of the City of Newport News, Virginia, was enacted by the Virginia General Assembly in nineteen seventy eight. Recognizing the need to ensure the charter remains relevant and effective, the City Council believes that it is imperative to establish a charter review committee. I recommend adoption. Are there any speakers? No, sir. Motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. Second. So, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, I would like to know who is uh, going to be um, appointing that review committee. City Council will be appointing those members. How do people apply so that they can hear this and know that you can be involved in this, you as citizens? And I think it's important that you are involved in this because this is a review of your charter, which is state mandated. Yep. All boards and commissions are routed through the city clerk's office uh, for any application. So we would love for uh, the more the merrier. We want uh, ultimate engagement as we look at the charter, which hasn't been uh, looked at in a few decades. And it is, it will be listed as the Charter Review Committee. Is that the name? Charter it? Review Committee. All right. So I urge you who are here and those who are listening to be aware of this and to get involved in it. This really is important stuff. And, and I think you should be a part of it and be very aware of what's going on. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bethany. Four. Councilman Ely? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury? Four. Motion carried, 7 0. Page 179, item G2, Mr. Manager. Item G2 is a request to adopt an ordinance authorizing the sublease of Seafood Industrial Park Parcel 18 between Chesapeake Bay Packing LLC and the Riggins Company LLC. Chesapeake Bay and the Riggins Company LC have come to an agreement for the sublease of city-owned seafood industrial park parcel 18 and they are requesting city <coughs> approval. The terms of the lease between the city and Chesapeake Bay require prior written approval by city council if the tenant desires to sublease the premises. The term of the sublease is five years with one possible five-year renewal. I recommend adoption. Are there any speakers? Yes, sir. Two, Mr. Beloga. Questions only. Mr. Lewis questions only. City Council, do we have any questions at this time? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, thank you. Motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. 
Vice Mayor Bethany? Four. Councilman Ely? Four. Councilman Harris? Four. Mayor Jones? Four. Councilman Long? Four. Councilwoman Vick? Four. Councilwoman Woodbury? Four. Motion carried, 7 0. Thank you. If there are no appropriations. We now move to item I, citizen comments. I will call each name in the order it appears in front of me. Rob Coleman. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council, Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, Madam Clerks. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I want to apologize ahead of time. I meant to speak during the public hearing for the budget, but with all of my journeys here to the chamber, I have never filled out a comment form, so I must have done it you know, incorrectly, unintentionally, but thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm here today to talk about one of your strategic priorities. I know that public safety and public schools are definitely high on that list, but also affordable housing. So as a board member of the Housing Development Corporation of the Hampton Roads, I just wanted to come and, and express our gratitude for that, focusing on affordable housing for our citizens in Newport News, and also thank you for considering a CSAG grant that our executive director, Sister David Ann, has applied for that's going to help us provide more opportunities for our citizens here in the city of Newport News. Currently, we have 18 total properties, 17 single family homes, and one apartment complex that we provide services for uh, to many families. And these funds that are going to be, that we have requested, will help us with much needed HVAC repair, roof repairs, plumbing, and things of that nature. So, once again, just wanted to say thank you. We appreciate all of your efforts, and I know from firsthand experience uh, what it takes to go through a budget process and all the considerations and all of the requests and needs that the city has. So thank you so much for your time and your efforts, and also we appreciate your consideration of our request. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Michael Wade. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to try and just keep this brief, uh, considering I'm not here for really any of the general city functions, but here to speak on behalf of the conflict taking place in Israel and Palestine, uh, which is not outside of the city since it lit up the city hall in blue and white. Six months now we've been into this, and me, uh, having watched a lot of the news surrounding it, following as much as I can, <coughs> I'm mainly here saying my part. I'm not here to get anyone to try and say anything or to goad anyone to say anything. I do think what's taking place is a genocide. I think it's abhorrent what our country is letting it happen. And the only thing that I really ask out of the city council now that we've seen that aid workers are not safe, and even as one of our own senators has proclaimed, our servicemen and women are not safe from the IDF, from our allies' military. So the only thing that I really ask at the city council tonight, call for a ceasefire. There's been enough bloodshed. I don't think there's really anything else to say. So that's my time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next item is new business. City manager. None, sir. City attorney. Nothing, sir. City clerk. Nothing, sir. Councilman Ely. I just want to thank everyone for coming out today. I, your voices were definitely heard. Um, I appreciate the fire department and police department coming out. Um, and I want to apologize for y'all even have to come out to advocate for your pay. It is much to serve. Y'all work timeless around the clock to make sure the citizens of Newport News are safe. And here recently you have a dual role. You're not just police officers and firefighters. You're also mental health counselors. With the growing, role, growing rise of mental health needs in our community, y'all make sure y'all meet those needs as well. As well as you always at basketball games, football games community events. So I just want to say I appreciate you. This council right here appreciates you. 
and we're going to make sure you get the compensation you deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Harris. I got one more thing. Uh, Councilman Ely. I would like to um, say hello to my mom and aunt for coming <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> this is their first meeting coming to since I've been elected for eight years. So thank you, Mom and Aunt Pat. Anything else, Councilman? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I just want to know, are they coming back? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been eight years since they came, so we, I'm just, I could take this. <laughs> thank you, Councilman Harris. And yes, and thank you once again to everyone who came out on tonight. I echo a lot of what uh, Councilman Ely said and shared on this evening as well. So I definitely appreciate all of the hard work that our uh, public safety, fire, police officers do for all they do in the community. And um, we're definitely going to continue to look into what we can do to ensure that we keep you here in Newport News. Uh, I just really, real quickly, wanted to share that um, partnering with the Tri-City Youth Foundation, they are doing a food drive. Uh, for the month of April in partnership with Helping Out Thrive Peninsula. They took that on as their community um, support for the month of April. And what they're doing, they're collecting items such as peanut butter, jelly, canned corn, spaghetti sauce, tuna in water, and breakfast cereal. Um, if you are interested in helping out with this food drive throughout the month of April, uh, there will be a location and the store in Patrick Henry Mall called City on My Chest will be a donation uh, sp spot. And uh, we will have some more information on some donation uh, spots as we continue to um, partner up and figure out where it would be the best and most convenient for citizens that would like to help out. Uh, feel free to reach out to the clerk's office and you can get in contact with uh, Miss Tanisha Hines and we can schedule a time to pick up drop or your drop off areas for any items that anyone may want to donate so we appreciate everybody in advance who's willing to help us out and um that's that's all i have thank you councilman long i also um want to appreciate everyone that came out tonight and talked about the uh, budget uh, as well other concerns in the community i too uh, would say i do appreciate the uh, men and women that are in the public safety and fire and police uh, and, and, you know, I will do my best to make sure, you know, we are um, make sure our, our uh, public safety officers are uh, meeting the competitive wages in the community. So it's really important to me. Safety is number one for the city um, and to support uh, the people that really serve us here in the city. Also, um, I want to, I guess he already left the Lackey Free Clinic. I had an opportunity to visit the Lackey Free Clinic, and I was... Uh, made aware that is anyone that doesn't have health insurance, dental insurance, can get care. Uh, that's something I wasn't aware of. And you know, anyone that's listening, um, like free clinic, well, now it's called Lackey Clinic, is on a bus route. So uh, if you know someone that's working but they do not have health insurance on their job, please, you know, tell them to go up there and receive the care they need. Um, and that's all I have. Thanks, Councilman Vic. Oh, yes, I wanted to um, say the, the same sentiments about thanking you all, the uh, police and firefighters, for coming out here tonight. Um, I can tell you personally, um, and as a resident of this city for years, that it's imperative that we do the right thing as a council to be able to make sure you are getting the funds that you need, because it is very important. Because of so many situations that you run into, I can only imagine. I've never been a firefighter or, or police officer, but I know no day is the, exactly the same for you because of so many of the needs you have to meet for the citizens that, that live in our community. So I don't take it lightly as you come here to speak. Um, do know that we are doing the best that we can do, and I appreciate everything that you do for our community. And also, uh, Chief Drew, I thank you for your leadership and um, all that you have done to not just be here for your team, but so many comments that I get as a council person about how you embrace um, your staff and also the youth, the youth in the community. I, I was thankful to have an opportunity to go on one of the community walks after a terrible shooting in, on 34th Street, but to be able to know that all people are not against the police and how the young 
children embrace you and your team as you're out giving them information and making them feel safe even though it usually has been a time when you know there was some negative things going on so I, th I thank you for that and that's all I have Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Woodbury. Yes I, I realize that uh, I wanted to do just ditto to everything my fellow council people have said there's no need for me to say it again but thank you all for being involved and for caring and for helping the city of Newport News move ahead. That's all. Thank you. Vice. Yes. Um, agreed, of course, with, with all of my colleagues. Um, but I almost feel like we can't say it enough how much we appreciate uh, everything you all are doing for our community. Um, I've had the pleasure of, of interacting um, um, quite often with our fire department, with our police officers, whether it was uh, getting to greet the uh, Peninsula Fire Academy 231, being able to speak there and just to see uh, some uh, of the new folks that are, that are joining our family. Uh, and then whether it's, whether you know it or not, people are watching. I see uh, on Facebook, the, whether it's uh, Chat with the Chief, where there's now a, a podcast they also have too. And so I pay attention to it all because we appreciate everything that you all are doing. And so, as you know, public safety is a priority for us, hands down. So we're going to do everything. Uh, to ensure you were fairly compensated. Um, in the same vein, I, I do um, uh, share the same sentiments for our teachers as well. I think it is a little unfortunate uh, that the state um, having to, whether it's, it's over an arena or whether it's not, I don't know. Uh, but the point is, I think the, the localities are, are in the middle of all of that. Uh, and so I just want to also uh, ensure the school system that we're going to do everything within our power to look out for them as well. So. Thank you, and that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thanks. It's, it's hard to wrap up after everyone's comments. I think I'll just say a few thank yous. So thank you once again to the manager and to uh, Lisa and your staff for all the hard work, uh, number one. Uh, number two, thank you to everyone that came out, everyone that continues to serve in our city. And then the, the last one is to our, our two chiefs. Um, thank you both for what you do for the fire department and for the police department. Um, the, the question that I would have, or the, the comment that I would make is this. I would say um, I try to be a very accessible mayor. And so um, I know I've spent a lot of time with the police department. I think we're going to start, uh, I'm going to meet every single fire um, uh, station coming up. Wesley, all right, that's correct. And so what, what I would ask of, of the ones that serve in the city is uh, I love it when everyone comes out in mass and, and is uh, upset about the budget. Uh, also, feel free to stop me in the gym, which I see a lot of you in the gym. Feel free to stop me at Food Line. But, but in honesty, like when I when I come, I think I'll be with you, Wesley, on Thursday. Um, and when I do these dinners, feel free to like come and communicate said concerns. So that way, just like we build the budget throughout the year, this isn't this doesn't happen in isolation, right? So just come and talk to us. I think you'll find that everyone on City Council is accessible. But I just want to say thank you for all that you do, and we'll make sure that we can continue to balance the budget that has uh, we continue to pay down our debt, continue to pay our teachers, continue to ensure that our firefighters and police are well paid and taken care of. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you.